Hello and welcome to Wilmington's Historic Legends and Facts. I'm Jackie Margolis and today we're going to be talking a little bit about tunnels in downtown Wilmington. First of all, I want you to know that Wilmington in the 1700s was a very important port city. Market Street is certainly named after the marketplace that existed back then. So you've got a lot of activity going on with Market Street. Number one, they were selling uh, foods and uh, chickens, and then they were having a, a wonderful sale on tar. Now you could buy tar in a barrel, and of course it was a very hot, sticky, and very dangerous product to, uh, to touch. But they needed tar in order to build their ships and their docks. But it had one drawback. The one drawback was that it was very flammable. They had, in the 1800s, 200 beautiful homes that were uh, actually seated right on the riverfront, along with a beautiful church. Well, what happened was the sailing boats that used to come in uh, to bring their goods turned into uh, steamships. Now, these steamships had a lot of heat emitting from their ships, and when they would come so close to the docks, yeah, you guessed it, all the tar that was helping to build these ships was on the docks and they started exploding. So from that time on, they started having horrible fires. We lost 200 beautiful homes down there in the 1800s just because of tar. But of course we couldn't live without it and neither could all the shipbuilders from around the world. We had wonderful uh, ships coming in from England, from uh, other parts of the world, even as far as the Orient. So how important was Wilmington back then? pretty important city for a small town. In the 1700s, they did build these tunnels, five of them in downtown Wilmington. They're called Jacob's Run. The name it's called Jacob is because a father and son were tanners, right on 4th Street. And he decided he wanted, he had a creek running by his house. When that creek would come so close to his house, he needed that water in order to help with the tanning. And so he actually uh, built this beautiful cathedral design uh, tunnel right in front of his house, thus the name Jacob's Run. And then you have all these tunnels running all the way down to the Cape Fear River. Now the Bergwin Wright House Museum has one that runs, it's a side tunnel, it's kind of like, it would be like an, an artery running to the main vein. And so you've got all these uh, different tunnels that were used back then, possibly to eke out some of that water. We had a very interesting uh, case about a year ago. This elderly gentleman came to uh, the Bergwin Wright House and knocked on our door, and Claire Garotti, who is uh, head docent, asked him what was wrong, and he said, I have a confession to make. I broke into the uh, Bergwin Wright House in the early 1930s, when it wasn't a museum yet, and uh, me and my brother wanted to find the tunnel, and we did find the tunnel. And he said, I was only nine. He said, and my brother, who was 11, kept pulling me into this tunnel and we marched for uh, nearly two hours. And we ended up at Dudley Mansion. That was just one story. And he said, after that, we just decided that was gonna be our playhouse. But in the 1700s, you can imagine what was happening in those tunnels. First of all, they did use it as a sewer area. So it wasn't very pleasant to be in there, I'm sure. It didn't smell very good. And, and we had all these people that were trying to smuggle uh, possibly prisoners out. Uh, it could have been part of the old uh, railroad during the slavery period. Uh, lovers were meeting. Think about how interesting these tunnels, uh, and oh, if we only had videotape back then, we'd, we'd know so much more about them. But we do know they exist. 